what is an ML estimate and why do you need it? Well, later on we will use complex functions to compute real integrals for functions with unknown antiderivatives. Those complex integrals will consist of several parts. One or two parts will give us the desired real integrals. Other parts will be complex integrals along either very small or very big circles. We cannot compute the latter integrals explicitly. However, we can show that their contributions vanish if the radii of the circles either go to zero or to infinity, whichever of the two is applicable. In order to show this, we will need so-called ML estimates. So it's clear now why we need NML estimates, but what are they? We will learn this in the next two videos. In this first video, I will prove a few results, which we will need in the second video, where we will see the theorem about the ML estimates. If you already know all of these results, you can continue straight away to the video with the theorem, otherwise keep watching. So the first two statements are basically uh, almost from real analysis. The third one is one which really involves complex functions. And the fourth one is the one we need which combines the first three. So let's take a look at the first two first. Those are relatively easy. So the real part of z smaller or equal than the modulus of z. Why is that? Well, if we write z equals x plus i y, the real part of z equals x. And x is smaller or equal than its modulus, because if x is positive, it's equal to its modulus, modulus. And if x is negative, it's smaller or equal than any modulus, because a modulus is a positive number. So that's the first part over here. Well, then you know the modulus of x is the square root of x squared. And that's smaller or equal than the square root of x squared plus y squared, because now we add something. So we make the x squared bigger by adding the plus y squared. And then we're done because the square root of x squared plus y squared is just the modulus of a z. That's the first one. Second one. If a function f of t is bigger than a function g of t, that means that if you take the difference, f minus g, that you will have some positive function. Now, if you integrate, you add the contribution of the function to each other times some dt. Well, that means that you will start to add positive quantities. I don't know how big you get, but you add positive stuff, so you will eventually get some positive answer. So that means that the integral of f minus g is a positive number. So that's the inequality over here. Then you know that you can split up the integral of f minus g in the integral of f minus integral of g, uh, take the g to the other side, and then we end up over here, and we see the integral of f is bigger or equal than the integral of g. That's it second statement. Let us continue to the third statement, um, which says that the real part of the integral of some complex function equals the integral of the real part of that complex function. That is not so trivial, because first you have a complex number, you start to integrate, so you are starting to do something, and then take the real number. Why would it be the same as taking the real part first and then start to integrate? Well, it's due to the very definition of how you should compute the integral of u plus iv. That's by definition, that's over here, the integral of u plus i times the integral of v. So, and then we put the real parts uh, in front of this. Well, then we know the integral of u dt is some number, say number a, and the integral of v dt is also some real number, say b. So we have then the real part of a plus ib, so that's just a, so the integral of u dt, and then we are over here. Now, the uh, uh, u is a real quantity, so u equals the real part of u, so that's what we have over here. And the real part of i times v is zero, of course, because v is also uh, a real quantity, so the real part of i times v equals zero, so we can add that, that's what's done over there. And then we are, and then we are there, then we have the real part of our integral equals the integral of our real part, and that's statement 3. On to the fourth statement, which says that the modulus of an integral is uh, smaller or equal than the integral of the moduli. 
Well, that's the basic idea of this, if you look at it real, it's kind of obvious. Uh, if you, uh, because the integral of the modulus means that you are adding the moduli of numbers. So that becomes a positive and probably quite big number. Whereas if you uh, first integrate and you add up the numbers first, which can be positive and negative, so they can tend to cancel each other out. And if you uh, take then the modulus, they, okay, in the end you get a real uh, positive number, but you, ha you can have had many cancellations. So that's why the integral of the modulus is in the real sense always uh, smaller than the, if you take the modulus first. Complex that also holds, and why is that? Well, this integral of W dt, that will be some complex number. So let's call it r0 times e to the power i, theta0. And then we can write down two expressions for r0. Well, first of all, r0 is the modulus of the number r0 e to the power theta0, so it's the modulus of the integral. That's over there. Okay, let's leave that because we want that because it's over here as well. But you can also write r0 by putting i to the power i theta0 over there. And we have r0 equals e to the power minus i theta0 times the integral. And then we will start to rewrite this expression here until we get something like this. So that is the idea. So let's continue. So r0 r is real, so that means that this combination here is also a real number. So we can put the real part in front of it, it won't change the number. And that's what we did over here. Now we know the real part of the integral is the integral of the real part, so you can take in the real part, and that's what we did over there. And now we use both 1 and 2 at the same time, because we have the integral of the real part of something. Well, the real part of the something is smaller than the modulus of the, uh, that something. That means that the integral of the real part is smaller than the integral of the modulus. And then we are over here. And then uh, we are uh, done, because we know that the modulus of e to the power minus i theta naught times w equals the modulus of e to the power minus i theta naught times the modulus of w. And then we are over there. And that's what we want to have, because look, we have an equality, 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 smaller equal, and finally an inequality. So the integral of the modulus equal, 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 smaller equal, and in, uh, integral of the modulus over there. And that's the statement for which we wanted to show.